Artificial intelligence. How many times have we heard this? We wake up in the morning, we drink our coffee, we read newspaper, and there is something about it. We watch the television, and we hear something talking about the latest technological progress. We drive in the car, we listen to the radio, and there is someone talking about artificial intelligence. How many times have we heard the robot will take over? How can we trust robot? Robot will take our job. You think I'm going to do another class on artificial intelligence today? Forget about it. Today we're going to talk about self-selfie coffee machine. How many of you have taken one of this coffee? Everybody. Well, me too. How many of you can build a self-therapy coffee machine from scratch? Nobody. Me neither. But we consume the coffee. We trust that machine. How we trust this machine? For sure, we are not going to open the machine or read the electrical scheme of the machine. We are not going to read the software code of the machine. We trust the machine because of the coffee we take, we consume. We drink our coffee and we like it. We trust the machine. Well, you might wonder why I'm here in Annapolis listening to Luca talking about self surfing machine. Because artificial intelligence today is exactly like this self surfing machine. We use all the time, we trust what it does for us, but we use all the time. We go in the airport, we put our passport on the screen reader, the gate opens, we go through. We play Risico, we play Monopoly with our friends while we have dinner. Alexa, play Bohemian Rhapsody of Queen, and start playing. We have a job interview, we don't know where to go. We put Google Maps. Google Maps tell, take this street, left, right. We are at a destination. We use every day artificial intelligence. We don't know how it works, but we trust what it does for us. But it's not always good as it seems. A few years ago, I had a friend. He wanted to buy a nice car, OK? He was saving every month some money. But he realized it, it would have taken many years to save the money to buy the car. He was a nerd. He was an engineer. He was always the first of the class. He was a high-skilled individual. So he started building a software. He started building a predictive model. And he started investing in his own uh, favorite cryptocurrencies, Bitcoin. So he built this model, he started using this model. This model was telling him, hey, tomorrow open a position, Bitcoin is going up. Or close this position, Bitcoin is going down. For a few months, he started making money. He trusts his own model. Everything was working perfectly. But all of a sudden, on a rainy day, things start changing. And he started losing money. Bitcoin was dropping. And he was not able to understand why. He built something, he was a very skilled engineer, and he was not even able to understand his own artificial intelligence. Imagine you are the owner of a bookstore, and you have thousands of books on display. You are the owner, and you want to maximize revenue. So you hire a consultant. This consultant is an expert in uh, machine learning, in computer vision specifically. And he installs a lot of cameras on your shop, every camera pointing to a specific area of the, cam of, of, of the bookstore. And basically, he creates a, a model that, is, that employs computer vision and performs facial recognition of expression. So you recognize if a, if a customer is happy, is engaged, is sad, is disengaged. So the model can say, hey, in this area of the shop, all the people are engaged. 
In this area of the shop, all the people are disengaged. So the owner can have a suggestion on where to put books. But also, for a few months, again, he starts making money. He starts selling books. Everything was going OK. But all of a sudden, the revenue starts dropping. He called the consultant. The consultant answered, hey, I have some problem here. I keep taking the decision according to the model. But my revenue is going down. And the consultant says, hey, listen, I don't know. Is the model that is telling me what to do? Is everything is automatic? I don't know. So imagine the frustration of the owner. He's so frustrated that he say, I don't want to play with artificial intelligence anymore. I fire you. A few years ago, I had a friend. One night, he started shaking, and he lost control of half of his body. He thought he had an ictus. He was sleeping with the wife, and he started losing vision from one eyes. He couldn't see anymore from one eyes. He was very reactive, and he called the wife and said, please, bring me to the hospital. Something is going on. So they go straight to the hospital. The doctor understood something was wrong, and he performed a scan of the brain. And uh, there was uh, something as, as, as big as a, a grain, mice grain, that he was in his brain. And the doctor said, hey, I'm sorry, but you have a tumor. You have a malignant tumor. You have just a few months of life. Well, you can imagine, my friend, he was destroyed psychologically. He didn't know what to do. He didn't know how to react. He was destroyed. So the doctor started giving him cortisone. And he was performing over time these brain scans to see if something is up. And strangely, every day, something good was happening. He started seeing again from the left eyes. He started getting control of his half part of the body. Well, he was getting happy. But the doctor didn't know what's going on. He was trusting the machine who took those pictures. He was interpreting there is a tumor. And he still didn't know what to do, what to say. So the doctor couldn't trust the machine, couldn't trust artificial intelligence anymore. So what is the moral of this? Should we really trust artificial intelligence? We cannot stop technological progress. It doesn't make sense. We cannot stop to build intelligence machines. It doesn't make sense. But we can challenge the prediction the assessment, the inferences of these black box machines. And above all, we have the right to understand how they work, and we have the right to get explanation on the recommendation of the machine. So what is the solution of this black box artificial intelligence? Nowadays, in artificial intelligence, there is a subdiscipline that is called explainable artificial intelligence. And this is getting at the forefront of artificial intelligence in our society, everywhere in the world. So remember my friends who wanted to get some money for his car. Now let's assume that this black box model is saying, hey, there's going to be an increment in price of 5%. But he doesn't know why. Imagine now that the artificial intelligence that tells, hey, there is a 5% increase, add something more. For example, he had a statement like this. The number of buying orders have significantly increased at current prices. Therefore, investors are willing to enter the market now. Or in the last months, Bitcoin has dropped by 20%. Every time it happened, is strongly rebounded. Therefore, we have high chances of a positive price increase. Again, with current trading volumes, there are high chances of a big price move. As you can see now, we have a prediction from the machine, which is plus 5%, but we have a set of explanation. 
This is in artificial intelligence are called propositional rules. And you can understand that with this type of information, we can, act, we can actually inform our decision making. Now, let's go back to the bookstore. You were losing money, but the model was saying, hey, all the people in the shop are happy. But still, you are making money. You are losing money, sorry. Imagine you have something like this now. You have a dashboard of visual analytics. So now you know the number of people that enter your shop during the day. So we have in the morning, lunchtime, evening. As you can see, most of the day, people were happy. But during lunchtime, there were so many people in your bookstore that even if you put the books in the right order and organize the book properly, there are so many people that their experience is negative. And now, with this visual analytics, we have a better understanding of why and what's going on. And again, with this type of information, we can better inform our decision making. Now, let's go back to, the, to my friend. He was diagnosed a tumor. I don't know if I would have survived just with this information. Now, imagine the doctor beside this prediction, which is evidently wrongly, as some more information. We have two premises. White pixel in the picture, in tissue, brain tissue, suggest abnormal cells that are present. And when we have abnormal cells, and we know that they are actively growing, after multiple scan over time, therefore, we have high evidence of a tumor grade 3, 4, which is a malign ma malignant tumor. This is another argument. The patient reported the recurrent headaches in the morning followed by nausea, and his vision was diminishing over time. Therefore, there is further evidence that abnormal cells are actually tumor. But then, we have something different now. We have a third argument. Neurological specialists demonstrate a very rare condition called, called multiple cavernomas. Multiple cavernomas causes cluster of abnormal blood vessel to form in the brain, causing headache and seizure. Therefore, our previous argument, one and two, are no longer applicable. So now you can imagine that if the doctor would have had such information, he would think twice to say you have a tumor. In artificial intelligence, this is called the feasible argumentation. We can express information as arguments, premises, and conclusion, and all of you understand what's going on. But also we, have, we can add other arguments, and with this we can retract the previous conclusion. As you can see, with this type of information, we can actually inform our decision making. So we need to focus on building artificial intelligence system, not only focus on what, but also focus on why. We should build intelligent machine, focus on what and on why. Intelligence machine that can actually empower human, that can actually empower our decision making, can inform our decision making, and we should have the right to understand what's going on and interpret this machine and interpret their inference. Alan Turing, is already 50 years ago, 60 years ago, is considered the father of artificial intelligence. He's where, when everything started. And he had a very simple question. Can machine think? Probably some of you know how things have evolved. And artificial intelligence now is spanning across sector in our life, in our society. 
But we have built a very powerful, very accurate, very robust system. But they are look like black boxes. We don't understand what's going on inside. We get the input, we take the input, and we get the output. Stephen Hawking says, success in creating artificial intelligence will be the biggest event in human history. Unfortunately, it might also be the last. Unless we learn how to avoid the risks. So it is time to take action. It, it is time to build intelligence machine that can actually inform our decision making. We need to take control of this system, intelligence system that we build. And we need to use this system, artificial intelligence, to empower human intelligence. We need to do a revolution, a revolution that democratizes artificial intelligence. It is time to open black boxes. Thank you.